Hello, everyone. It's Jennifer Williams with Coldwell Banker Gold Coast and podcast host of Lux Life. On this episode, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rain Phillips, and she is going to tell you all about what brings her to our podcast and uh, her specialties. Go ahead. Tell us all about it, Rain. Oh, thank you, Jennifer, so much for having me on your podcast. I'm very excited to be here. Um, give you a little bit of background. I am a real estate agent in the state of California, and I have a niche focus with apartment leasing throughout Los Angeles. So for your listeners that haven't been to LA before, we are a very large city and we span so many different communities. And I work anywhere from the ocean, west side, as we call it, all the way into one of the uh I guess you could call it suburbs of Glendale. So I'm within those communities of Los Angeles and I have my own business called the leasing department. Wonderful. And go ahead and give us what the um, the website is. I do have it pulled up here. What is your website for um, the leasing department? It's exactly that. It's the leasing department.com right on the nose, <laughs> which I love it. I, we made sure uh, to double check in, you know, check in and, and see a little bit about what you've got going on. So let's talk about leasing both sides of it. Absolutely. Well, we can start from, and I like both sides of it, but let's start from the renter side. Somebody perfect. who's looking, you know, to find that perfect place and there's many factors I think, and this can go for anybody anywhere in the world that I think you should do before you actually put the time and energy to going into seeing a place. And the first one is to realize that most people want you to move pretty quickly. So between 14 and 21 days. So is, has your lease expired? Are you ready to move? Can you contractually move without being um, financially burdened by breaking your lease? So that's one thing. Just know the basics of your own lease and then find out what are your deal makers and your deal breakers. And by that, I mean, what do you really want in an apartment home? And a great example would be I moved during the pandemic and I thought, wow, I do this professionally. What do I want in my place? So I wanted stainless steel appliances. I wanted central AC and heat, a balcony. But my number one thing was in unit washer dryer. It's sure. not pop. Yeah, it's a great amenity. It's so convenient. And it's not popular in LA. And usually you have to pay more to have it. But I thought, oh, I kind of have the inside track here. I'm going to be able to get all these four things considering I have a client base and I see apartment homes. Okay, so I got two things out of those four things. <laughs> I, got, I got the stainless steel appliances. And I got a balcony. So, but I also got other things that I wasn't expecting, which was a lot of light, high ceilings. So I did get other things that offset that, but you have to be able to compromise, but know what you won't compromise on because that will really narrow your search when you go into places as like Zillow, Zumper, Hot Pads. And then in any city, I definitely recommend knowing what community you want to live in. And for most people who are doing flex work from home still or about to go into the office back to more of a traditional um, desk style, definitely know where you want to work and what's your commute and use your GPS to figure that out during traffic times. Don't do it at night. Wait till like 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning and find out what does that really look like when people are actually on the road driving to where you're going to. So those are just a few starter hints for people who, you know, are looking for a new place. Make sure you can look for a new place. Where are you going? And find out what it is that you really want so you can narrow it in your search. Sure, because then it, may, it helps you to enjoy the unit longer. It's a lot less heartbreak that way too. To, you've got your list. This is my do's and don'ts. So it's not just about how much can I afford. It's also about how much like my, my cost of enjoyment. Absolutely. And during the pandemic, I noticed that a lot of people who moved within mm -hmm. Los Angeles, they moved not only because they saw opportunity prices were lower, but because they realized, they'd be like, well, why are you moving? Like it's a pandemic. It was early stages before the vaccine. People were 
very scared. They didn't know. And they would say, I never realized I didn't like my house. It does not have a, na- a lot of natural light. I didn't know that because I'm never home. Um, I don't really like my community. I don't like the amenities. All these things were like driving them to like go for a place that they never really knew they wanted until they had to spend more time at home. So sure. you're right. Yeah. Make sure it has everything that you want because moving is expensive. It's, and it's kind of a hassle, to be honest, you've got to like literally transport everything, make sure you want to stay there for a few years. And that if you're planning a small family or having a pet or something like that, that you can grow into it. Definitely have that factor. That makes sense because it's, it is, it's, it takes a lot. I don't think people realize just what it takes to pack up where you live and to relocate everything paper clips included kind of thing you know i mean every we don't think we look at the furniture and we think furniture big things but it's also all the little things that have to go along with it too oh my yeah gosh. oh gosh it's, yes when i moved that happened to me i literally was like moving for a week and it just took so long because i was dragging it out because i had to work and it's very hard to get movers which is another great point Make sure when you pick your lease start date that you've already know that you can get a moving company because we're still having that lag because of COVID that we're not able to get the things that we thought we could secure immediately. And a lot of people would want to move out their um, date for the lease start because they realized there's no moving trucks. You have all these supplies that, you know, usually you use during a, a typical move and those resources were very much drained. Just weren't there. And then also... Uh, besides affordability and location and amenities, we also have to consider insurance, utilities, things like that. Like, do you, where I'm moving, do they offer high speed internet? You know, within, with most places, do I would have to assume, but I would assume. I don't, you know, how is LA? Um, LA is so funny <clears throat> because it seems like Spectrum, which was formerly known as Time Warner, they were acquired and then merged into Spectrum. They seem to have like um, a territorial hold on LA. Like I hardly know anybody who doesn't use Spectrum, but just by default, there's not a lot of choices here. So most people use Spectrum um, more in like the beach cities, Playa, Playa del Rey, all that area. You can get more AT&T, but mostly it's like you have one choice. It's Spectrum. You can try to get anybody you want, but it's Spectrum. And... (laughs) It's like Comcast here. <laughs> you can go anybody you want. You can use AT and T. You can use anybody. You use Comcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you don't really have a choice. But now that you've figured out all these things, the next thing to really do is to um, know your credit score and know exactly where that stands because a lot of people don't know that they have a compromised credit score, and that's surprising to me because this credit score means everything to you. It means your buying power, whether it's a car, a home, a rental, a credit card. And I find like a surprisingly amount of people haven't heard of simple things like credit karma, or you can link it to your debt, your debit card. I have JP Morgan Chase. I can check it anytime there. And it's nice because they give you updates on fraud alerts or things that they think that you're not doing that could be a fraud alert. And when you have something on your credit score that's bringing it down and that you don't know about it, it's even worse because it could have been there for a long time. It just looks like you're neglectful. So yeah, and you didn't think about it. Score. Yeah, that would make sense. And then how, so walk us through the steps. First, we're doing, you know, we're looking to see what, what our, what our list of non-negotiables are. Right. Um, I, I want this, I want this, I want this, but then you still have some flexibility. We've checked our credit score. Our credit mm-hmm. score is what we feel is good. Um, we also would, you would be the professional that would tell us what it, what it would and would not be. What else? What are the other steps as a renter that, that we can expect? Okay, so you definitely want to have proof of income. And if you have a standard job where you're not a 1099 or a gig worker, you'll probably have your last three pay stubs and last year's tax statement. But if you haven't been with the company for more than a year, you can expect them to ask for your offer letter, which would be signed by the person who offered it and executed by you and someone to do a proof of employment check, which is me. So that's just a simple 
email stating, are you working here? And that comes back positive. So that's pretty easy. Um, again, if you're, if you're working for yourself, the burden of proof is a little bit harder because you do have to show the last six bank statements and your 1099 um, in terms of your taxes. So you wanna make three times the rent because taxes in California are very high. Um, that's gross, it's not net. So yes, we'd go on gross because if we looked at net, I mean, it would really, I mean, it's such a disparity to how much you make and how much is taxed that it would be really hard for people to qualify on just how much they actually get paid. I never thought about that. Okay. That's yeah. and that's why we do these podcasts. To, so everybody's aware of the differences in the communities because people are moving. Um, yes. You know, oh are, and, and of, you know, of course they're moving, but I mean, relocating from states and countries and world global and yeah. people are always on the go. And I would rather our audience, you know, be educated and have that, have that knowledge ahead of time because wow I wouldn't yeah okay <laughs> yeah so that's gross and then um if you like something okay so you see the property but you're just new to the market and you want to see some other things I would definitely advise possibly putting in an application because over summer we had something out of all my years doing this we had something that I'd never seen before the market was so narrow with inventory we had people just putting in an application before seeing the place, which sure. was very like the cart going before the horse. And yeah, people were signing. They we were had going people buying here doing the same thing. And it was just, it was so different because again, there was not a lot of inventory. The good things were going really fast or the things that people wanted in the neighborhoods that have more demand. And I was really surprised that, because I'd be like, I call the person, I'd say, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and run your credit because that's a big thing to run someone's credit. They're definitely going to have a lower score. It's going to yep. show up. And then they'd be like, go for it. I'd be like, well, do you want to make an appointment to see it? They'd be like, Oh yeah, we could do a FaceTime, which is a great tool to see something, but it became very common, even for people who live in LA to do a FaceTime tour because they don't want to deal right. with traffic like in their own city. They're like, no, I'll do a FaceTime tour. And if I like it off that, then I, then I'll use my time to go see it in person. We did that um, over the summer for a home. Our, our clients were actually in California okay. and it was a home that was here in the Chicago, in the Chicago suburbs. And we sold another one from Texas. That was a transfer relocation off of FaceTime. So great. I love it. I love it. So easy. Yeah, it's the same tour. It's the same exact tour, except on the phone. I'm not even doing anything different. I give mm -hmm. you the outside of the building, just as if we met in real life. We follow a whole, in the industry, it's called the tour path, as you know. We yep. follow the whole path. We go, for me, it's like parking and laundry room, any kind of amenities. And during the pandemic, I mean, that's when I really was able to show up for people who needed to come back to America, especially from England and Spain. Mm -hmm. They were told to leave the countries. They were like, we're locking down, how to stay or leave now. And that's when I was able to help people relocate through, you know, new technology. It's really great. And I think that, you know, we, we go above and beyond and out of our way to make sure that we are making that impact, that positive impact. It's not just about being a real estate agent, whether it's buying, selling, renting, doesn't matter. It's about helping people. Absolutely. That's what we do. And you've taken where you can take this technology, your knowledge and your expertise and put it to work for both of both yourself and your clients. Oh, absolutely. And part of this, I mean, I am remiss to have to say this, but part of this, people would call me and they would say, yeah, you're actually the only agent in like LA that's even offering FaceTime tours during the pandemic. I was like, so I was, I mean, Good for you, for me, I was gaining all these clients, but almost by default, it's like, I'm the only one who's doing it, which I couldn't like wrap my head around. And I do hear that. And you probably hear that in your profession too, because I mean, some people don't talk about like being in sales, even though you're selling something that everybody wants and has, which is a home. 
it's just, it, it can lead to some things that, you know, kind of sour for the agent's end. And so they may think like, oh, this isn't worth my time, but you still have to put yourself out there and fulfill your obligation of being an agent. I mean, that's what yes. you do. Yeah. So um, back to that. Okay. So you have your pay, you have two pieces of identification, and then we run your credit on our side of things, which is really interesting because in California, credit has become such a topic that now they're thinking about saying like, if you had your credit run for an apartment home in the last 30 days, you can use that same credit report for other companies. Because right now, if you apply for me, I have to rerun your credit. And so for people who are getting their credit run, like maybe two or three times because they lost out on their first choice and sure. now they're going to a different company and we have to do the same thing. It's like, what's the point? It's just, I think like for that, you should definitely be able to have, to be able to use credit karma or another industry standard that's going to give us the same information without damaging someone's score. I would agree. I think that is. And then do you, and we do here, I would assume you do as well, charge to run your credit. Yes, but we, we do, it's $25 and it goes straight. Well, that's to, reasonable. Oh, absolutely. Because I don't know if you heard this, but to my understanding in New York state, they were charging so much to run your credit. It was going to two and $300. And it was a lot Her of that. Person. Yes. And a lot of that money was just going, it was considered to me, it'd be considered a, you know, a profit, like a, a kickback. That's off. your profit. If you're not, cause you're only going to pick one, you're only going to pick one applicant and yes. whom, whomever is living with them. Yeah. If you had five applicants, you're only picking one. So I, that wow. would be I know. So they, I believe passed a law recently saying like, you have to lower the price of the credit check because it was so much. Um, we use a proprietary software called Appfolio, and it's very easy for property owners, especially smaller property owners, but still have a portfolio to use. It's Appfolio. It's an app, <laughs> and it can be on your desktop, and it's so user-friendly. Nice. So we do everything through Appfolio, um, which is so nice because before I was using, before we um, introduced this product, I was using something called My Smart Move by TransUnion. And that was $40. But now with Appfolio, they do everything and it's just $25, which is so easy. That's so nice. And especially when you can share it, you know, here, this is, I think sometimes in, in a different market when we're not in, in such a, a high demand, crazy hot market. I know my experience has been that we want to work with everybody wants to work with everybody. You know, we just ran this credit report a week ago. You know, what really could have changed that bad? Uh, things could have changed tomorrow, the next day, but there's a point where you kind of have to just take a leap of faith too, you know? Absolutely. The thing with rent, you know, and I, and you can let me know if you think this is true. There can be a lot of fraud from the renter who will oh. try and give us false documentation. Yep. And so I think that's where, um, as you know, owners are risk adverse. I think that's when they get a little bit worried, but I think for things like, that's why you really ask for the three pay stubs, because even though the first pay stub will have a year to date and show you how much they've accrued in salary over the year, the other two pay stubs are just so, <laughs> just really for continuity. So we see that they haven't yes. been, basically um falsely documented or created and one of these great i don't know you can use so many ways to just create your own documents now it's so scary or even like deep fakes those are freaking me out the deep fakes oh, the deep fakes yeah when you can see somebody like be created to be like tom cruise or Joe. oh Fox. yes yes now it yeah 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 and that like carries over into documents in a different way and so you're just like just the amount of technology oh. you can really do this and so that's why so it's crazy so I mean we get all your documents together and let's say this is a I think really important let's say you have compromised credit or you didn't know something was on your credit my thing is to address it immediately with your agent say listen I didn't know that I have this old Verizon bill. It's always Verizon for some reason or Spectrum. It's utility. <laughs> I don't know why. Like they moved, they missed the bill. They didn't know. It's like, I just, 
I'm like, let me guess, it's Verizon, right? And so anyway, <laughs> how'd you know? <laughs> no, completely. I'm like, like 190-ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's like health. And that's something that we look away from. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Like the health bill and the education. It's just yes. the thing that unfortunately you see people just not able. And that's a it's a national topic right now. You see health bills education bills, not so much Verizon bills, but these are the <laughs> things that are like negatively affecting people's credit. And at that point, you're really looking at the whole picture. You're looking at debit to income ratio. You're looking at if there are any negatives, what are they and why are they? And is the person making um, proactive steps to have a payment plan? So you still are responsible for these bills, whether you want them or not. But how are you handling them? And that leads to not only financial responsibility on paper, but I think for people, it's a people business. It also leads to character. Like, are you yes. going to pay the bills? Yeah. Are you going to? Yeah. Oh, wait, what were you going to say? No, I agree. Yes, I completely agree that it's, it's, it's about the character as well. You know, if you look at something and it is the Verizon bill of about $190-ish from two years ago, that's dinging their credit you can kind of walk around that a little bit you can kind of okay hold on they've they've made their car payment they've been on time with their rent yeah. payment you know <laughs> this is right it's like we believe you so <laughs> yeah. yeah so you take all of this and if you do have something that you think is a negative just tell your agent so they can convey it to you know the property owner and you know there's ways around it you can offer a double deposit nobody likes to do that it is a lot of cash sitting in one account it usually doesn't have any kind of return. It's no, not, it's not optimal, but you need a place, you know, you need a place. So what are you going to do? I mean, so you have to figure those things out for yourself or try and negotiate something. And I think that's really the key word for the renter is like trying to negotiate even the price. I feel like you should try because most people there always is, I mean, you know, this from home sales, there always is, I think, some way, somehow to get a little something off the margins. Even for me, standard, it could be $50 to $100. But when you look at that for a year lease, you're talking anywhere from $600 savings, which is a plane ticket. Of course, yeah. like trying to travel. <laughs> <laughs> so, or... Um, Here we come. <laughs> I know, exactly. So you want to do these things and you want to be your own advocate. At this point, you have a job, you have a car, you have all these things. You must have gone through a, a process to get to where you're at. Keep using your voice to ask for the things that you want. And even if you don't get it, that's fine too. But at least you tried. Make the effort. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Use your voice. Yeah, you tried, you made the effort. And that's when you have a, a real estate agent that represents you. you know, they're trying to get the best deal for you as well. Because you represent the renter. You know, we're on the rental side and on the flip side, too, it's about negotiating a deal. Same thing, whether you're a rental market or home sales, it's about mm -hmm. representing the client properly, as well as what kind of negotiation can you put together? You know, and, and I think our clients, both sides need to be understand, like they do have to have a, a degree of flexibility. Nobody would want to put down double deposits, but it the, the unit checked off everything off your list. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's kind of where, come on, come on. So give it, give the extra, you know, it's not the, the most financial. It's not going to, you're not going to have a rate of return on it, but you will on your enjoyment. You know, Absolutely. If it, if it off all your boxes. And I think with, you know, consulting with your realtor or, you know, real estate agent that will, that'll help, you know, mm -hmm. what, what does that look like for you? Absolutely. And a lot of people try to negotiate even that, they'll really like, you know, what about the deposit with a uh, second half, month? you know, all of these things yeah. are just like, well, and I do represent the owners because they actually pay me my commission. I don't represent the renter, but I do. And I, of course I have to have my loyalty is to the property owner, but at yeah. that point I see a lot of people who we have a lot of new graduates, people who have never rented before and they have their parents come in as a co-signer so it's like you definitely want to make the process as smooth as you can. And I think for people who are just going to start out there, when we send you the application, please read the directions. I mean, <laughs> like as silly as that sounds, I have people state clearly, 
please uh, submit two pieces of ID. There's no ID. It's like, come on. It's like, you got to work with me too. So we, yeah. cause this is like, you know, uh, there's also time involved because it's, you could have competition for that unit and someone else could have done it right. And so going back and forth, it really, it really helps you to get that place when you actually follow the directions. So, you know, to look the, the best that someone possibly can, if they're coming, saying I'm coming to rent to you from you, um, a, you know, you represent a, a property. I want to, what are, what things are going to stand out or things that I can do besides reading the directions and following along and checking that, what can I do to stand out above the crowd? Like what's going to stand out to you? It's like, oh, that's, this is perfect. They're going to do this, like right out the gate. So it's the perfect property exactly everything I want how do I beat the competition is there apply a first <laughs> yeah no apply first I mean be the first one I mean I've had some basically we have a lot of competition with um anything under 2000 for rental market sure. in LA causes yeah. a demand. it's just now the average is going more for 2300 so even if you have something that's a small one bedroom like a micro living um, we really encourage you to apply first. And I've had people see me go back to back in open houses. And then I see them go to their car and I just see them on their phones like this, just filling out the app online because they know that if they don't get their application in first has to be dated and time stamped, that they have the kind of like the right of first refusal in the sense that I will review their application first. Nice. No, yeah. instead of rather sometimes we'll hear oh we we're waiting for the other applications that we hear in our market i don't you know know how you, if yours is that different we will hear oh we have other applications coming in we're mm -hmm. going to hold off for a second it's like we're okay. first and we were we still have to they'll still wait oh, really yeah. yeah so that's kind of it's interesting the difference in the market wow Wow. See, yeah, I always thought that fell under batching where you weren't allowed to do like apples to apples on an application because obviously you would take, yeah. you know, the best application, which is not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is, that is interesting. Yeah. So we usually go with the first application and then you can see it because people will call us out on it because mm -hmm. we only deal with rentals. So that's kind of interesting. But then you know, hopefully you get it, you get the lease, review it, sign it, give the checks. I mean, this is a very speedy process. I mean, the length of a, a cycle would be about from the time that you see it, apply for the apartment home and give me the checks, including lease signing, should be about 48 hours. Nice. That yeah. is a nice turnaround. Yeah, it's pretty speedy and I keep it going um, because you can't get bogged down because I'm constantly showing it to other people. Like, I'm like, if you want it, come and get it. It's yours. But I, I show to I close, which sounds a little heartless to other people who want more time on the market. But again, I represent the owner. And so his best or her best interest is for me to show it till it's closed. Because a lot of times you'll have people who will stay on the market, even though they have an application in and they're buying time. And that's fine on their side. But on our side, we're trying to shorten that time that yes. it's on the market. So at this point, we're kind of in competition. So that's kind of gives us a natural leeway into what owners are looking for. So basically owners want to rep want to give you a property that's up to date, that has up to date appliances, that's clean, that's been painted, that has all maintenance completely taken care of, including checking for water pressure, fire alarms, smoke alarms, CO2, locks being changed. They really want to present you with um, a great experience as you move in because they're probably charging you as much as they can, but yeah. they're giving you as much as they can. They're giving you a great community that's in demand. They're giving you um, an up-to-date apartment home, something that's cleanly something that's well lit, that has nice curb appeal that everybody can be proud of. And then they have this expectation from you that you'll give them, you know, a top notch application and do everything in a timely manner. So you are sure. working. Yes, exactly. So you are working together to have this relationship that will hopefully for at least 12 months contractually speaking, <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> that's what we want. We want everybody to be happy on both sides.
yeah and and it's a, i don't some people don't realize the um the wear and tear that is on a unit when somebody is moving in and moving out the building as a whole you know the movers are bringing in the furniture bump the door jam bump the walls scrape something whether it, it might not be intentional i mean it's we all have horror stories i i we had a rental at one point and when the renter moved out i swear i would never do it again because of the damage that they in the condition that they had left the property in i was just how could you do this yeah. You know, and you don't, so have that 12 month lease, look at that longer lease or, or, you know, see what your options are because it is, it's, it's advantageous as well to the property owner. Oh, absolutely. And here in California, we go month to month. So after, so let's say you're on 11th month, you put in your 30 day notice to vacate, bingo, the lease dates have expired. Now you're going month to month, but everything else in the lease is still active, except now you can just give 30 day notice to vacate and it will not be considered a lease break. But you're right. There's a huge difference when people do move out because on my end, I show it when they move out. Like it does not even, I can't wait for it to be like cleaned and turned as we say in the industry, turned into like move and ready. I just have to show through it. So when, when people leave it bad, I mean, most of the time and it's in demand, I'll go in there and I'll like try and sweep it out and like move yeah. things just to make it look like <laughs> could be crushing. lifted again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. You know what it looked like when the people move in, right? And, you know, so you know the potential <laughs> and nobody wants to repaint everything, you know, and then we get into a uh, security deposit and and then that gets down that slippery slope, which I really don't want to cover today. <laughs> That's not. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just both stay away from that one. Just, just you know what? Uh, to our audience, our, our listeners that are worldwide, just leave it the way you came you in. found it. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, if you paint, ask the company for permission to paint, return it back to. In writing. Oh, no. In writing. Yes. Don't just exactly it's I you know, guess yeah you are renting so you do have to be aware and be aware of being a good neighbor I mean I think common courtesy whether you're a single family owner or you're living in a multifamily or small complex just you know it's really that old do unto others as you would like done unto you because as my friend says one man's floor is another man's ceiling <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> I know. I was like, what? What a gem. I mean, it's so that's awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm taking, I'm, I'm borrowing that one because that is good. In con, in, you know, we have uh, several condos in the city and you are, you're right. One man's floor is another man's ceiling. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I mean, you really, but that's it. I mean, and especially it's true. people ask us, they'll be like, what are the walls like? I'm like, I just don't know. And here you can still, I mean, LA, I don't know about Chicago, but we're very, we're very 420 friendly and it's legal here. So you can smoke. And we have a lot of people who do smoke marijuana oh, yes. oh, and yes. they vape it and they vape um, nicotine. And so you have these things that are happening and you really can't control smoke. <laughs> There's just no way. It's like, it emanates. It just goes through everything. It goes through everything. You can smell it. I swear. Yeah. You, know, you could be on the 20th floor and you can smell it. The person walking in, you know, it's just in yeah. into the building. It just goes so far. And yeah, you do have to be, you have to yeah. make sure you're aware of that as well. If you're somebody who is like, allergic or has like yeah. a very anti you know very anti-smoking yes. because I mean you can try and find out but that's that's not something that we can legally guarantee you I mean it could be someone standing outside using their cell phone smoking I've never had that issue but you're right I mean we have only be I mean we you smell the smells in the in the building you know yeah. in the condo and we and we can as long as it's in in the privacy of your own home you can't be in public and so, yes, if you, you, and you, I would wonder if we can, you could, it's not like you can ask that question if it's for medicinal purposes or what, why, wow. Yeah, that is a, I've not run into that yet. So. Oh, I have. These people came to look at something. They really liked it. And the lady was standing, um, it was a duplex 
and the lady was standing outside and she was just basically lighting one after another. And they were like, Does she live here? And I was like, yep. And they're like, goodbye. They're like, we do not like cigarette smoke. It gives us headaches, all these like health side effects, not to mention secondhand smoke. Yeah. She's like, we don't want it. So that's a great thing that we're talking about right now for <clears throat> renters. Like really try, I have people who I, you know, admire, they go back, they look at the neighborhood um, at night. Some people go back and wind up talking to the neighbors and finding out about the management company. Yeah. Sure. I can see that. I could definitely see how is, how is the building managed? Because we can all, we have first residential service and a lot of property management here in Chicago. Okay. Um, and you know, you can look, go on their website, you can see the reviews, but it isn't nothing better than going to and talking to someone who's already there. Mm-hmm. What do you think? How is the building managed? When I pick up the phone, does somebody call if there's an issue? How is it handled? Is it in a timely fashion? How are the elevators? <laughs> oh my gosh. All of those things are great things because once you move in again, back to your point, it's costly to move. It's totally laborious. I mean, have all these things. And I had somebody who relocated to one of my buildings because she had roaches. Yeah. Big time. Roaches were infiltrating her place. The management oh. knew that they were pre-existing. And they did not tell her. And so oh, she, that was going to be my next question if they if they said something to her. No, they did not. And so she wound up moving into a place with roaches, which was reminded me oh. I was at a pretty large building in Silver Lake here. And they wanted me to rent. And like I just did not believe in the product, Jennifer. Oh, I do that as well. I will turn down if I do not believe in the product, if I do not yeah. I have to feel good about it because at the end of the day. I'm, it's my brand. I'm representing exactly. this to the world. Yes. Because yeah. to, to professionals like you and I, we look at large pieces of property. We see so much property every day, right. even yep. though it's a personal choice. A person may only do this once or twice every five years. I mean, it's not, it's a big life change. This, <laughs> this company walking down the hall, I'm not even kidding you, flying termites. I never knew that existed. I was like, what's, I was like, literally like what's going on. I'm showing these people. We walk into the place, into the apartment home. The first thing I see is a roach and I'm like, go away, roach, go away, go hide. I was literally like, (laughs) like, oh my God. And the lady turns to me, she's like, yeah, it's okay. She's like, I don't know. She's like, would you live here? And I didn't say anything. Oh, seeing it. I don't. And I didn't say anything. I was like, get that. yes. Yeah. That's yeah. a big question. When someone asks you, would you live here? And you're like, I mean, it's hard. It's tough for us to answer too, though. It's like, cause it, there's so many different facets to the, um, you know, you back to sales one-on-one, my personal opinion doesn't matter here, but exactly. then it also spins to, well, if you wouldn't live here, why would I live here? It's like, uh, what do you say? I didn't say anything. I wouldn't this have said the- Yeah. yeah. This was the only time in my career because she could go back and tell management that I don't advise it. I just didn't say anything because I do think it's a personal choice. But at that point, I mean, it's just most of the time I just, I don't say anything. I mean, I do like all of the properties that I represent now, but at that point in this building, they had some really big issues that I thought they really sh- had the legal obligation to disclose to people because they had sure. two different types of, they had cockroaches and they had flying termites. And at that point, you need to shut that building down, tent it and take the take the loss on your monthly income yeah, because it's, it's we, a sick building. It's a sick building. We had, um, we had helped a family that moved to, they relocated from here in the Chicagoland area to Florida and um, they had found a rental. They'd gone down there, found a rental on their own. Then, you know, didn't use an agent. It was supposed to be a friend of a friend. Great. We're going to move in. Oh, nice. This, this family moves in and she calls me and we ended up finding them a home to purchase it very quickly after this. The home was infested with Florida's version, what I would call, what you and I probably would call a cockroach. They Mm. were saying, oh, it's palmettos. 
helmet i'll do it i go i don't care what you call it there we i think we all call it the same thing and they were saying, oh, it's, we never had I, any idea of the infestation, but there were cans of raid and cans of stuff everywhere. Yes, you did. Yeah. You and did. I'm like, and I told, I told my clients, go, now, next time you're going to use a realtor, right? You're going to call real estate. Call me. I'll find you somebody because that, or make sure it's, I'm not knocking the, the self-represented, you know, landlords or sellers. But wow, what an experience it was for my clients. They were freaking out whether all of these things were, these bugs were going to be in their boxes and then they're going to move into their new home with yeah. their family. And then they had a um, an infant with, and I'm like, how in good conscience can somebody, that's, that's unethical treatment in my, in my book. And you, us as real estate agents, we both have to follow the ethics. Absolutely. You know? And I think they you should know? have just closed it and it wasn't my this is a professional management company. So I was doing onsite leasing at that point in my career. Sure. They let me go from that job. I think, oh, no, see, I couldn't close. I mean, there was no way I could close. No. And the lady that I worked with, she was like a closing machine. And I was just like, they were like- Not with that, ew. Her closing compared to my not closing- they obviously saw like, how can she do it? And it's not like one of you, both of you are not closing. No, she's closing, Rain's not closing. And I was just like, I just, I couldn't wait to leave. I always felt like there was like something. I can can't I do that. Call? Yeah, either can I. So that's something that I think everybody needs to, you know, renter beware, buyer beware. Yeah. You know, you have these um, duties on your own to really look at things. And that's one thing that FaceTime won't give you. And I try and represent properties that are cleaned, have everything, but yeah. And if you can possibly, if you have a friend, have the friend come meet the agent and do a walkthrough with the agent. Cause then yes. you have somebody here that can help you if that's possible. And they can take measurements for you. They can see things that maybe somebody else won't want to cover on you know, right. on video. So that's always a good idea. But yeah, if you can do it in person, I think that's the best way. I would agree. I think it is, or have somebody, it's the physicality of it too. You know, it's a vibe. You walk it's, in, a it's the vibe and it's the energy. And like you walk in and like, nope, something's off and you leave. And it, and it could be the temperature of the room or just some smell that triggers something or whatever it is. And it might not even like a smell, like we were talking earlier, just sometimes certain things affect people differently so yeah, yeah that, that is something that FaceTime doesn't deliver that is one of the downsides of of you know of that part of of our job right. interesting okay. yeah very interesting I know a lot goes into what um, real estate agents do and I think for your audience find somebody that you want to work with that you feel like you have an instant camaraderie with that you know that this person will you know go to bat for you or just help you the most that they can. I mean, even though they may be representing the buyer, there's no reason why they can't cross over, especially more in, in leasing where you kind of have, I wouldn't say dual agency, but you do have, you know, you do have a moral responsibility to want to help somebody who's uprooting their life yeah. and moving someplace else. And so you really want to make sure that you establish a good relationship with somebody because, you know, they're really playing a minor part, a temporary part in your life. But after that, you're going to have to live with what you chose. So try yeah. and get that, try and get them to help you the most that you can. Yeah. We have no agency agreements. We have dual agency as well here, but we encourage like, no agency agreements. But again, whether it's the buyer, the seller, the leaser, or the, the, lessor. the lessor or lessee, we still have a, an ethical and a, and a duty you know, to treat everybody right, you know, we they have to stand by our clients. And then it's, it's, I think it's good karma though, too. Oh, you know, absolutely. What we put out, I mean, bad news travels very, very fast. <laughs> it's, I, 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 I love my referrals. I love my five-star reviews. I want to keep them coming. <laughs> absolutely. And people are aware of that. And, you know, I worked with a management company. They had bad reviews. I pointed it out to them and slowly we've been like, you know, you have to make the effort to ask people for the review and then the people have to yeah. make the time to want to do it. So again, this is really a reflection on your relationship and how you built it 
And then of course you always have to ask for a good review. <laughs> not good review. Ask for that good review. Because sometimes you're going to get that review. You're like, no, no. Yeah. I so mean, what are the good one? Pull out the good one. And, then, and, and then you can tell if somebody buy, I mean, I don't buy any of my reviews. My reviews are all given. Um, yes, of you course. know, honest and genuinely, I know some people can go out and buy them, but to me, like, why just do a good job? Yeah, totally. You know? do, a good job. <laughs> do a good job. And you and I are both industry. I don't want to say veterans because we're too young for that, but, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I think we kind of are, but <laughs> and if you have, a, you have just the right amount of experience. <laughs> <laughs> you <feel> yeah, once, <laughs> once you do it for a while you're like wait a second 10 years plus you're like how did that happen <laughs> that was years. yes i well you're right because some people how long have you been in like um <laughs> oh geez yeah that long okay <laughs> just I'm the like, right amount of time <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Kind of perfect seasoning right now. Yes, I bet. Exactly. All the strategies, which is what you want. I'm not, not, we're not knocking the newer agents either. We're just saying it's, we've, we must be doing something right or enjoy it enough to still be doing it because it's, it's definitely not an easy job. <laughs> yes. And it's a very personal job. And I take it very personally myself because I firmly believe home is your sanctuary. It's where you start the day. It's where you end the day. It's where you entertain. It's where you have all these private moments. And yeah. you really want somebody to be happy there. And honestly, I'd rather have somebody be happy there. And I personally don't even believe I can sell anybody anything because make them just take a home. It's just like, that's like a really magic power. This isn't a car or a blender or any of these other <laughs> household goods. It's, but it's so nice when it happens like that, because you see like people are looking for what you have and then you're offering like a really great service that's, you know, helping them. I really yeah. believe that's important. And I just want to say, um, back to the renter, it is a nice touch because it's personal on the owner side too. If they do want to do that note saying, Hey, listen, I know this is a in-demand property. I just want to let you know, I, I, I intend on staying here um, for the foreseeable future. I have an excellent credit score, rental verification. I will take very good care of your property. If you want to throw in luck, I'd like to, you know, pay a little bit less and do the offer that way. Sure. A personal note, just that touch. I mean, I always pass it on because to me, that's a valuable, I mean, it's valuable in the sense that someone's taking their time to go ahead and let the owner know something a little bit about them. And it does set them apart yeah. from the, the so-called competition. Sure, because like we want to make sure that, I know that there've been some people, these love letters that especially that was going around and, and it was, is it fair housing? Is it against fair housing? Is it against fair, and, and mm -hmm. I just, I'm like, I mean, you see it on the TV shows all the time. We would there for a while. And I think it's, it has, uh, is that but it is interesting yeah you I mean I kind of think it's like tells the story of the it's not so much to it's set yourself apart but also like hi you've never met me this yes. is who I am I mean that's what I was would take it as you know let me explain to you but I see where we were where you can get in the weeds on it too um, uh, yes that's true but you are meeting people on paper yeah and you're just seeing them as numbers basically I yeah. mean, it's all factual, you know, things, your credit score, quantitative, yeah. all these things. Yeah. So to me, I mean, that's where it gets a little bit more personal because it is about where you live and mm -hmm. I mean, enough said right there. It's so important. Yeah. I mean, we're both doing these interviews from home. I'm in my home office. Yeah, you know, I'm in mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, right there, I mean, think of all the things we could do at home. So it's good though. It's a really good industry for anybody who wants to, I think it's a really good industry for anybody who wants to work with people, um, who likes housing, who likes architecture. There's yeah. just all these benefits to, I think being a real estate agent or being in real estate, property management, anything. There's so many different paths in this career. There are, there's so many different paths. I mean, there's always continuing education and there's always, you know, finding your niche. What <laughs> Whoa, gosh, you can't even get to it. Finding your niche. What is, what, we're both laughing, go, oh, that's due, isn't that? Um, but, <laughs> we, you know, certifications, and it, as we both know, you know, it's setting ourselves apart. And if you like, if you don't mind working a lot of hours, 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to meet these part-time real estate agents. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm just part-time. I'm like, part-time. I'm like, oh. I've never had the grace of doing this part-time. It's always been like, you know, well, it's like, it's been dictated it's a lot, by the market, but the market's always the market, whether it's high, whether it's low, if you're doing something right, you are actively in the market. You're always busy doing something, you know, it's always, you know, with you're all, it's, there's always something. Yeah. And it, you know, with paperwork, it just keeps going inspections. <laughs> you learn a lot. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about people and you definitely learn a lot about your communities because that's one of the beauties of it. You should be moving around your local city. And so that will take you to new restaurants that will take you to see everything that's happening, you kind of become an ambassador of your own city and your own brand, because here you are letting people yeah. know like, Hey, this is happening at this time of year. There's a farmer's market here. This yeah. just opened. So it's, it's really for, I think for a person who has that combination of being a little bit more of an extrovert. Yes. Yes. Extrovert. I mean, we're both, you, we connected. And yes. then this is me actually, before we started recording this, we've already had other conversations and we've only known each other for a week I and know. you know, here it is, but it's, we're both extra, we're both, I have the same, you know, it's very similar personalities and get out there and get to be that, that ambassador for your community, you know, because now somebody, I, if I hear of somebody for LA, guess who I'm calling? Yeah, same thing. See, we you just know? built a referral, a connection. Yeah. And then our new friends, but networking. So yes. you tell me you're at the neighborhood association. Yeah. Gold Coast Neighborhood Association. Yes, it was um that and uh you know, my my time is booked. And but we as I was just telling you, I haven't heard this in a long time, but you know, talking with the gentleman, oh, you're a real estate agent, the realtor, thank goodness. I'm like, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember last time I heard that, but I'm glad. Um, you know, glad to glad to help. You yeah. know, and it is. It's about being out and being having that connectivity and knowing the community that you're in and you serve and get out and get involved and you serve, then that helps with your business as well. You know, translates yeah. into you have, it's, it's not when you love what you do and you're in sales, it's not selling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it just comes off naturally. And, and here we are. And, you know, that's kind of why we, we started this podcast because to get the knowledge out there and to get the education out there and to get us and our guests out in front of the world. Exactly. And that's what you want for the person who's listening. You want to meet a Jennifer or a Rain or a Tim. A, a Jennifer or a Rain. <laughs> exactly. You want we know somebody. Has, yeah. Meet somebody that when you talk to them, because, you know, especially for home listings, you've got to go through Zillow and they ask you to have an agent and yeah. then they're going to connect you to a third party. And that third party is going to lead you down the road to somebody that you're going to have to start making instinctive guidelines or judgments is this the person that you know I want to work with I even like the sound of their voice am I going to want this they're going to represent you through the transaction I mean what's the length of a sales transaction time wise about 30, 30 days right around days. 30 days I mean some days I go 45 but still about 30 days right so you're going to work you with know? that person for a month and they're going to see all your financial documents and you're going to yeah. Do these things together. So make sure you have established a really good connection with somebody because really it should be enjoyable. I really think it, it should, should. It should be enjoyable. I mean, I have so many of my clients have actually, be, uh, that's where I spent Thanksgiving was with um, some of my clients. Um, everybody was shuffling and they had other places to go. And I'm like, sure, I will come over there. We have pizza night with um, about once a month with another client. Uh, we've become like family. and but it's because we have that connectivity and there's so, and it goes so far. They're your cheerleaders then. And they, they trust, you know, you, you, we put them, we put these families and persons into a place that, as you pointed out earlier, it is where we eat. It is where we sleep. It is where we live. It's a memory that we make the good ones, the bad ones, the holidays, the celebrations, the, you know, we in such a short window of time have yeah. such an impact <laughs> on people's lives. It's sometimes like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I, know. Know. 
I tell, I tell people like three, four times a day and I tell them I'm going to be your best friend for the next 72 hours. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I've had people like, for me. Say, yes. And then I've had people say, oh my gosh, I, it, I don't know what it's like. I, I don't hear from you now. And I'm like, like, like we're, they're used to like a daily or like several times, like the best friend for the next 70. They're like, wait a second. I'm like, I'm still here. <laughs> I'll oh still call. God. We're friends on social media. <laughs> oh my God, I, I relocated these. Um, <laughs> they just graduated college from New York, and I wound up talking to the mom so much, and I did all this problem solving for her because yeah. I was on the ground here, and she was in New York. And then I ran into the um, the residents like a couple months later, and they told me they're like, anytime we have a problem, we're like, let's call Rain. She can help us. <laughs> she'll she'll help us solve it. And I became like this family in joke because I did everything for them. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, maybe I should be a therapist. I was like, no, just go back to being a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah, just I have I, the clients from Florida actually hand delivered, personally delivered a bottle of wine, which if anybody follows my social media and knows how much I love, I love my wine. Um, and bottle of wine and a a cup, a little wine tumbler that is about, thank you for not only being our realtor, but also being our therapist as well. <laughs> there was a sleeping cool. bag. I posted it on Instagram at some point. Cause I'm like that it's true. We become that, you know, we started out with talking about rentals and now we're talking about advocates in real estate, but we, we, we become that go-to person not only just for all things real estate, because we do, we know so many people, we have such a large sphere. And now you and I have just taken both of our spheres and put them together. And then, you know, my other podcasts as well. And so it's almost like we've created this, this network inside of a network, inside of a network, and it keeps expanding. And we are, we are the advocates for our clients. So many times we have, are the go-to people we have either, if we don't have the knowledge, we know somebody who does yeah. and it becomes this thing. It, it's, it's such a, it's about, it's not, we're not just selling a home or, or moving you or relocating you or finding you a rental property or, or renting out a piece of your property. We're, we also become a part of the family. We become a part of that system. Yeah. You know, that and it's a beautiful thing. And I think that's why you have such passion for it. Cause when I give the people the keys, I'm really excited for them. And sometimes yeah. I get housewarming gift it would be like this blessing candle or a piece of sage or just something and I want people to be happy and usually they I have really good reviews too on Yelp um they're all organic and that makes me happy and sometimes that people are like yeah I'll give you a review and I completely forget to like go back there and you know ask them for it because I'm just kind of busy it's like on to the next one in that sense yeah. yeah I think it's really important for everybody in any in any profession love what you do do it with integrity and um, if you need to hire somebody like an agent or something like that respect them too because they do give it their all and if you need to cancel an appointment just go ahead and do it because I mean for me in LA and you in Chicago I mean we're in you know high density cities that have a lot of traffic so just be yeah. mindful don't waste our time we're here to help you and overall I mean I think these are all great tips that we covered I, I mean, do really too I think it is I do I would like to um stick around we're going to go ahead and wrap up but I would like to have you back on as well if we have about if there's in looking at your website and then how so we went over the the what's the email the address to your website and then your email address any it's other all on the website there's a whole contact page. Just drop me a line if you're thinking about relocating to Los Angeles or California, or if you just want to hear a little bit more about advice on how to secure your next apartment home, the insider track, I'm happy to help. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being my guest and hold on one second and uh, we'll wrap up here. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This is Jennifer Williams and you have tuned in my podcast, Lux Life, where we dove in with Rain Phillips and learned so much today. Thank you again, Rain, for being on our podcast and uh, we'll have you back on again soon. Thanks Thank a lot. So I had a blast. <laughs> I Thank you. I did too. Thank you. <laughs>